Are you ready to break into the high margin world of federal government contracting? You're going to love today's show. Hi, this is Daniel Laxton's, and welcome to the Roofing Business Builder Podcast. Now, I am your host and your personal commercial roofing guru. And today we're going to talk about federal government contracts, how you could get involved. Have you ever thought about that? Well, it's exciting to think about this because, well, there's a lot of money to be made uh, doing jobs for the federal government. But how do you do that? Well, before we get into discussing that, let's first get into our intention of the show. So this show's intention is, I am good at the hard stuff. I am good at the hard stuff. Now, we may have grew up with that phrase, maybe you heard this phrase that don't sweat the small stuff. And remember that everything is small stuff. And that's a good phrase to think of because in reality, the reason why we're afraid of certain things is basically we've never experienced it before. We don't have enough knowledge of that. And that's what the Roofing Business Builder podcast is all about, helping you to gain that knowledge so the fear goes away, so you can gain the experience and do things. Now, think about this intention, though, that I'm good at the hard stuff. When it comes to the federal government contracting, there's a lot of paperwork involved, a lot of red tape. You may have to pay prevailing wage. That can be scary. But if you hold that intention that I am good at the hard stuff, it's really going to help you because the reality, in the reality, you can do anything. Nothing's too hard for us. It only seems hard because we're not experienced with it or we're not familiar with it. So just hold that intention in mind. So when it comes to the federal government and getting contracts with them, I have the perfect person that I interviewed. Uh, this is Chip Ellis. He's my special guest. Uh, he's an entrepreneur. He's a speaker. Uh, he's a government sales expert when it comes to federal government. And he's actually the president at the International Association of U.S. Government Contractors. So are you ready for this? Let's look into my interview with Chip Ellis. Chip, so happy to have you on the show. Thank you for being here. Hey, thank you for inviting me, Dan. Appreciate it. Yeah. So now you are a federal government um, expert when it comes to getting contracts. So uh, I've had a, a lot of experience myself, you know, working with uh, government contracts back, you know, in the, the day. Uh, but uh, how, how did you get to where you are now, you know, when it comes to helping others to learn how to, to get government contracts? Well, Dan, I was in telecom for over 30 years and sold my company and retired to Florida. And my son went to school and I didn't have anybody to play with. So the U.S. Chamber of Commerce called me and they had a program to teach small businesses how to get contracts without the bid process, without all the red tape and paperwork that you normally associate with federal contracting. And it was a program that companies could implement themselves without hiring consultants. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I couldn't move up to Washington, D.C. to be with the chamber. Uh, so I commuted. So, so Dan, about uh, on Monday, I flew up to D.C. and back. And I did that for a couple of years. And we just helped thousands of small companies launch into the federal marketplace. Now, we don't do any city, county, state, school board, just federal, uh, but we help them uh, launch in without the bid process, which is really interesting. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. So, so um, yeah, so you started getting some experience, then you saw there was a need for, to help others in this industry, is what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. So we did it for two years as part of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and then in 2008, the last recession, Dan, in the last recession, uh, they decided they no longer uh, wanted to present this program. As you may know, they're the largest lobbyists in the United States. And this was one of the few educational programs they did. And, and so they decided not to. So I went to the chamber and I said, hey, uh, this, you know, 2008, are you kidding me? The sky was falling. This uh -huh. was the only game in town. And I said, can I buy the program from you? 
And to show you the heart of the chamber, they sold it to me for a dollar. And so since 2008, uh, we've just helped thousands of small companies uh, get in the, into the federal government. We're called the International Association of U.S. Government Contractors. Like I couldn't pick a name you can say in one breath. I'm sure your <laughs> listeners will love that. We just took all the time. <laughs> the name, but. Mm -hmm. So uh, some contractors may be doing uh, city work right now, or maybe they might be doing schools. Uh, but uh, you, you help people to understand that when it comes to government work, it's not all, it's not all the same when it comes to federal work. So can you explain to the audience what the, the difference between doing a school or maybe doing a library is uh, versus doing work for the federal government? Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Well, what happens, guys, is that there's about 40 industries that the federal government buys literally hundreds of millions of in every city, every town, picture, you know, every post office, etc. Uh, they need this work. And with city, county, state, and school board, a couple of the big differences is you normally have to bid for city, county, state, school board. There's a little bit mm -hmm. of no bid, but mostly you have to bid. And mostly you have to be the low bid. Yes. And in today's day and age, there's a third problem. And that is now that we've hit this recession, you might get what you wish for and get a contract from, from city, county, state, school board, and then start to get slow pay. Remember back in 2008, we had a paving contractor, for example, got a contract in Broward County, which is Fort Lauderdale, Florida, one of the best paying counties in the country. And he got paid a year later. Two wow. million dollar project. He had a All float. Put him out of business. Yeah, so it was really crazy. So with the federal government to, to contrast that, number one, for every one they bid about a thousand they don't, which is really, really interesting. And 80% of the time, if you do bid, 80% of the time the low bid loses. Very interesting. And so it's just a way to get in. Um, and by the way, they have to pay you by law in 30 days. This will blow your mind. They have to pay you in 30 days or a 50% penalty. Ooh, that's yeah, great. Yeah, no more slow paying. So yes, the contracts tend mm. to be bigger because they're now we're in a recession. They're stimulating the economy. And so they're adding a lot of money. They're gonna remodel every federal building. And by the way, Dan, there's only 361,000 federal buildings around the country, uh, over 10,000 just in Texas. So they're exploding uh, the sales right now. And so what are they gonna do? New roofs, new, you know, so if you're in roofing, it's one of the top 40 industries. And you get paid on time. Can you imagine? That's amazing. No, I, I've always felt like with the uh, contracts for paving the roads and they put up all the signs, they uh, shrink down to everything to one lane and there's no one there. And they're not, <laughs> and they're never there for like two years because they're out doing the other small jobs that they also landed. Right. And I was always saying, why aren't they putting penalties on those people and have a time frame of that if they don't, if they don't do something within the specific amount of time, they lose that contract. But, oh, my goodness, they wrote into the federal government contract that they're going to pay you within 30 days. That yeah, is incredible. Pay you within 30, or we're, big penalties. We're living in the future. I love that. <laughs> right? it, it's especially, we found that your audience couldn't know this, you know, if you're a roofer out there. But right now, in my lifetime, this is the best time to look at moving into this federal marketplace. There's 4,600 federal agencies, literally 4,000, you know, you, you know, the post office, the Army, the Navy, and the Coast Guard, you know, it just goes, the parks are, it goes on and on and on. And what happens is, the, as I mentioned previously, they add money whenever there is a recession. Like back in 2008, they added $828 billion to their normal spending. That's the way it should it, be, right? right? They say so that during the recession, advertise more, you know, like a lot of these, you're watching TV and they're like, why is this company advertising? Isn't there a recession? But that's when you double down, you know? That's when you double down. And that's what the federal government is. They're doubling down. They're spending more money. 
which wow. which is tremendous opportunity for us. And this will this will kind of blow your mind because one of the questions you know your roofing owners out there are probably thinking about is, wait a second, can I really get a contract? Like, isn't there tremendous competition? Like, what's going on out there? Is it really worth my time? Mm -hmm. And I want to share with you guys a couple laws. I promise you won't have to get another cup of coffee to hear this. Okay, I'll be really funny. <laughs> but here's the deal, guys. Listen to these laws. When you hear these laws, you're going to be able to answer for yourself if you can grow your company in the recession with these no-bid federal contracts. Here's the first law. Every federal contract under $150,000 bylaw has to go to a small company under $30 million. So it has to go to a small roofer, every contract. Now that represented over 70 million contracts last year. Wow. Tens of thousands of roofing contracts. And listen to this. Small companies only got 6% of those contracts. You wow. Know? Like what? But the law says 100% are supposed to go to small companies and 94% went to big companies instead of small. Why? Because the small business either didn't show up, only 2% of small roofing companies in the country, 2% who could and should get these federal contracts have bothered to register, which is free. 2%. Do you get like you eliminate 98% of your competition if you just come in and play the game? The second reason we didn't get all those contracts is yes, you do have to show up properly. And so if a small business comes forward and their paperwork isn't right, you know, it's not too good to be true. You really have to be what's called procurement ready where your registrations are perfect. And if they are, they have to give you a contract. That's why we're crusading across the U.S. now. Wow. And we're asking small roofing companies to come forward and, and get it. Let me give you a second law. This will blow your mind, too. The federal government is the biggest customer in the world. They, these 4,600 agencies spend $600 billion a year on goods and services. Like, I don't even know how many zeros that is, okay? <laughs> and, but here's the interesting thing for, for your roofers, and that is, guys, 80% of the money is set aside for small companies, for small roofers like you. So, And let me so ask you this. Can, they, they don't have to then uh, be a, um, a minority Native American, um, you know, like an 8-8. They don't have to be an 8-8 contractor, do they? Do, do you, are, do you suggest, I mean, of course, there, there are some 8A contractors out there, but they don't have to be to, to get this money and they don't have to be a, a hub uh, contractor? Yeah. Or? Dan, great question. So the federal government has about eight set-asides. So the service-disabled veteran-owned small business, so if any of your roofing owners are a veteran business owners, run, don't walk, and look at federal contracting, you have a license to print money. But they also have set asides for uh, minority, women minority, that kind of thing. However, remember I just shared with you that nine out of 10 contracts are going to big companies instead of small. Mm -hmm. So in the bidding process, those set asides are important. So if, if you're a roofer and you're not a woman minority owned, service disabled veteran, that type of thing, Native American Indian, uh, the bidding game is not very fun. However, with the no bid uh, process, the set asides are not important. And because nine out of 10 contracts just go into big companies, let's forget the set aside. They just need good small businesses that do what they said. Wow. They, their problem is the small business that they give a contract to and they don't do a good job. Yeah. So they got two problems. Small businesses don't show up and when they do, they don't do a good job. So yeah. if you could, there's, if you do a good job and you do those first contracts, good. Oh my goodness. You got, you couldn't do the work in 10 lifetimes right in your city. See, and that, that's so interesting to me too, because I didn't realize how undersaturated 
um, that, that this market is. I always tell people, do you, why would you want to bid, you know, a, a grocery store or, you know, a bid comes out and that these guys that want to cross over into commercial roofing, the first idea they have is they're going to, going to go after this uh, specified job. And I'm like, that's not your job. You know, you one, I, I wrote the spec. So I'm, I want the people to win this to be the most experienced uh, roofers that are within my organization. And the reason why was because I knew who did good work. I knew who paid their bills. And, and if I, if I got someone that came in behind um, all those guys and I don't know them, then that could give me a black eye. So I'd always tell them, why would you want to be the person that makes the least amount of money out of all the people that bid that job? And that's, that's, that's you, you know, that's you, you, you won this. <laughs> and if you, and if you do win it, you might will say, Oh my goodness, I'm, am I going to make any money? Cause did you leave something out? So, yeah. but this is a much better, uh, I always teach uh, like with roofing business builder, we teach people to snipe out their, um, their customer that get the right customer and get a whale, get, get someone that owns 20, a hundred, or maybe 150 buildings and be the best human being you could be for that person. Be, be a, a friend, be a mentor or um, the, a guy that's wearing a lap coat as a roofer. Cause a lot of these business owners, they need someone that knows what they're doing. And as long as that you do what you say you're going to do, then they, they'll use you forever. And, uh, but this, this is so exciting because, you know, I've had a lot of experience in uh, federal bidding, but I, I, nothing, when I saw your webinar blown away, I was blown away at, uh, at what you're teaching. So many things that I've never heard of or are thought of. And so, boy, I'm just so happy you're on the show, <laughs> but getting back to the no bid contract, um, and that you don't have to be uh, a native American. You don't have to be a woman owned business. Now, granted, if you do, if you are any of these, this is even better for you, but I had no idea that the market was so undersaturated in the federal government that because of the lack of qualified roofers out there that don't do what they say they're going to do, right? That's what you're saying? Yeah, that's precisely right. And, and to give your, your folks a little idea of how this works is that instead of going onto a website and trying to find opportunities, mm -hmm. instead of doing that, what, what you'll do is find the, the purchasing officers, you build a relationship yes. with these guys, and then they call you up and they bring you the opportunity. Let's say the post office says, hey, we've got a half a million bucks uh, to remodel, to, to redo this roof. And listen to this. This is very interesting. It's fixed price. So when they call you in, it's fixed price. They'll give you, we've got $531,632.18. It's right to the penny. <laughs> and they'll say, and now you have a first right of refusal. You can say, yes, yes, I can do this roof for this amount of money, or no, I can't. Because listen, guys, you can't negotiate the price. The federal government has use it or lose it budgets. So the law says they can't go a penny over the budget. So if you can't go over, you, if, if you need more money than that 531000 you got to walk. Okay, can't but, but they, they know what they're doing, though. So, I mean, uh, everyone knows the federal government pays uh, high, high dollar money for high quality or caliper, you know, uh, value. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but that's that's so cool. Yeah, and, and oftentimes you're going to look at it and go, oh, I could have done this for 500 instead of mm -hmm. 531,000, mm -hmm. but you would never come in at 500 because if you were to save them 31,000 as a taxpayer, thank you. But that would go out of their budget next time and they would hate you. So this is a fixed price. And here's what's really interesting for your guys, your, your, your listeners to know. If you turn it down for any reason, by the way, you don't have to just turn it down because of price. It might not fit your installation schedule. The, you know, for whatever reason you decide, no, I don't want this. Because guys realize that, that you couldn't do the amount of business in your city in 10 years. You with me? You couldn't mm -hmm. do it all. So when you turn down an opportunity, a no bid, they love you. What? They love you. Why? Because what do most small businesses do? They take it when they shouldn't. So when you turn down a contract, 
for whatever reason, it just doesn't fit your business at that time, they're going to call you back in and say, we've got 10 more behind this. Which one do you want? They this, love you for turning it down because now they trust you that you won't just take it and screw it up. Is, is this kind of like um, the illustration of uh, the girl that turns the guy down and he just wants her more, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah that's, I like that's that. Precisely. That's precisely. And you, one of the truth is, is it, you don't want to ever look desperate. It, it's like... Um, and that's also what we teach, like with roofing business builders, that millionaire mindset. Because if you if you don't develop that first, where you feel comfortable with talking to multimillionaires, you know, if someone that has a net worth of thirty five million, <laughs> then uh, they're not going to feel comfortable with you. And it's the same as like developing any relationship. If you come across, you know, a little weird, so that's kind of cool. So you have to be willing to say no. And that actually can put uh, create a better relationship with the federal government. That's great advice. Thank you and for that. Everything is negotiable about the price. So unlike a bid, you know how you get the bid and you're looking at it and go, are you kidding me? Why are they asking us to do it this way? This is ridiculous. So on a no bid contract, yes, the price is fixed. And yes, they have a scope of work. But everything is negotiable in there. So if you've got a better way to do it, a faster way to do it, as long as you're in the budget, they love that. And so you're not stuck kind of doing it their way. Mm -hmm. They'll do it your way, which, which I find our, our, our you know, clients love that. And by the way, with bidding or with no bidding, with the federal government, there's no permit pull. Zero permit pulling, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, yes, they have inspectors, but they're not, uh, like state or city or county inspectors, the federal government hires inspectors. So your work will be inspected, but it won't be by the city, county, states. Like you're not going to get toasted that way. And so no permit pull. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like they, they, the federal government, somebody <laughs> finally put everything into a box and it's all plug and play. It's all easy. It's much easier than it's incredible. Right. It's because they don't have enough small businesses. Remember, nine out of 10 contracts. By the way, I said $600 billion spent every year. 80% mm -hmm. um, of that money is set aside for small companies. So don't be confused. Every contract under 150 grand is for small companies. But obviously, as a rougher, most of your contracts are going to be over 150, especially if you're re replacing and not just repairing. But 80% of the money is set aside for small companies, which means we get lots of million dollar contracts. So if it's over 150 grand, 80%, eight out of 10 times, it's for us. If it's under 150, it's all for us. Okay, cool. This is awesome. I have two more questions though. I was thinking of uh, with what our conversation and uh, one of them is, you know, uh, Something and I know this from the webinar, but you know how much money? I mean, should a lot of these roofers will say, well, "I I want to go and do a multi-million dollar job," or that they want a thousand squares? And I'm like, "Can you do it? Have you ever done that? Do you have the experience to do that? Because if you lose your butt on a say a three hundred thousand dollar project, um, that's if you lose ten percent of your money, that's a lot of money. Whereas if you lose um, on a thirty thousand dollar project, well, get your experience." Uh, scrape your knees, lose a little, little bit of money until you get some experience. But um, so the first question is, uh, what level should a person uh, start out when they get involved? And then the second one is, do they need to have a really, you know, we know that it's $30 million. Anything under 30 million is considered a small business in America. Uh, but what size business do they need to have uh, to get involved? And then lastly, the the, the other question was, um, what sort of projects, maybe le uh, how much how much the contract would be? What sort of levels of contracts should they look at first? Right. So let me let me share with you guys. Uh, remember, they don't have enough small businesses. So I've had clients who said, "Well, James, you know, is there a revenue requirement to be qualified?" And no, there isn't. Dan, there's no wow. revenue requirement. That's and in fact, and there's no years in business. There's kind of this myth out there that you have to be in business like two to three years before you're qualified for a federal contract. And that is simply a myth. 
Uh, but exactly. the reason why is because like even I, when I was putting things out to bed, um, right. I would require five years because I didn't want any problems to come up. You know, I wanted right. the best of the best, but wow, this is totally yeah. different than like yeah, what you're saying. On the bidding side, yeah. they, do put, they do put requirements, but on the no bid side, they don't. It's for companies so they can test you out. And so you can literally be a startup with, you know, no employees and you can, and by the way, you can subcontract the work. So if you get a contract, you don't have to do the work yourself. You can subcontract to another company, which is kind of interesting. Just make sure that they're a good company. You got to do your yeah. homework. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be responsible. Go look you're at their work and get up on that, you know, check out their work that they've done and, uh, and, yeah. and, and call every reference they have, right? Yeah. And then as far as what kind of deal should they start with, I think this is maybe the most important question, guys, because here's the deal. Everyone whose paperwork is correct, every, that's called procurement ready. When your paperwork, these registrations are correct. When you're procurement ready, as you can see, the law says they have to give you a try. With me, you're going to get a try. Wow. Right? But remember, they're afraid of you but you're going to get a try. Why? Because the law says they have to. So what, what they're going to do is they're going to start, they're going to start you on small contracts. You're not going to have a choice. So your first contract will be for sure less than 50 grand. They're, they'll have you go patch some roof or something. I mean, it's going to be tiny and they're going to give you small contracts until you reach 300,000. Now, 300,000 is magical in the federal government wow. because until you reach 300,000, you're on probation. They don't trust you. They've been burned so many times by small companies. So if you're a company that says, well, listen, you know, I just don't even look at stuff under 300 grand, then federal contracting is not for you because mm -hmm. they are going to start you small probably around 50 to 100 grand kind of projects. That's still really good because I was thinking more like 30. I tell people go after the $15,000 thing, but the, what no, I've learned from you is like incredible. This is really good information. They'll build you up. But remember, here's the cool thing. You know the price. You've looked at the project. And if you can't make money, you turn that down. So you know going in, you're going to make money, right? You know going in. And some of you folks might be thinking, well, wait a second. Like, but how do they pick me instead of somebody else? Guys, the, the law says that no bid contracts, they're not allowed to have competition. So here's what's against the law. They can't call three roofers in and say, hey, we got this little $50,000 project. Can you do it? That's against the law. Wow. The law says if the federal buyer wants to have competition, they have to bid it for a whole bunch of reasons they don't want to bid it. And so they come to you first. They come to you and say, can you do it? Now, obviously, if you turn it down, they can call another small business in. But if you want it, it's a first right of refusal. How, how do they, so as long as you're on, uh, like, is it Fed Biz Ops or, or what have you, or if you're talking with that, the um, purchasing officer is that what it is and then mm -hmm. and so if you develop that relationship then they're going to put you in line is that what they're they're doing they're going to put you in line of rotation i've seen this with architects at different cities they never put it out to bid for the architects in the design phase they rotate the art architects i've seen that so i, I but i don't right. know how did they do that here's what's interesting instead of so for architects they rotate as you saw dan but for for the uh us roofers, what happens is this. You build a relationship with that contracting officer. And you might be thinking, well, okay, I'll build a relationship with him, but he must have 20 other relationships. And so does he rotate it, like Dan said, with the architects? Or how, what do they do? Listen to this. When you build a relationship with a contracting officer, if they have a relationship with any other small business, now I'm not talking just a roofer. I'm talking about any other small business. I want you to drop me an email and I'll buy you dinner. And after COVID, you can name the country we have it in. You will be the 
only small business resource this buyer has. Why? Because everyone thinks they have to bid. And if you have to bid, what do you do? You find the opportunity, you dot your I's, you cross your T's, you put a stupid low price on there and you put it in. Mm -hmm. Guys, with this no bid program, so, so your competition's out there and they think they have to bid because city, county, state, you got to bid and low bid wins. And they That's don't, our experience. Don't need, yeah. Right? You don't need a relationship with this guy. And so when you start a relationship with the buyer, you're going to be the only small business relationship in any industry that the buyer has. And so guess who they call each and every time? You. Wow. And that's why wow. with two or three relationships, like the average buyer, but this, this is amazing. The average federal buyer buys $75 million worth of construction every year. Oh my goodness. $75 million in construction every year. Obviously not all roofing. But think about it. Two or three buyers will make you a fortune. Not 20 or 30, not 200 or 300. Two or three buyers will make you an You can't keep up with all the work they have for you. Wow. So you, just, you have to be a good scheduler. <laughs> and you have to be <laughs> someone that's good at uh, analyzing the sub crews that, that they do a good job and they have to all be legal. Um, uh, yeah. Now on this uh, no bid contract, uh, do they actually uh, check for a uh, prevailing wage or, or how yes. does the pay schedule work? It's definitely prevailing wage. Okay. 100%. Uh -huh. And so you may have to turn it down because maybe they're not paying you enough because you do have to pay the folks prevailing wage. Which can be upwards of 20, uh, it depends on the, the location of the project, mm -hmm. right? For prevailing wage. So it could be, you know, 25 bucks an hour that you have to pay each of your employees. Does that include office staff or do, do you know that one? It, it, a piece of the administration also has to go prevailing wage. We can wow. help. Yeah, there's companies that'll help you with that. So, oh, wow. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. That's so much information. And by the way, your workers are going to love it. Right, <laughs> yeah. And you're oh, going to yeah. love it because they do pay more. The average, our experience is the average federal contract is about 20% more than an apple to apple commercial deal. So wow. you're getting paid more and there's more than enough money to, uh, to pay prevailing wage and the different things and kind of go through that hassle. Wow, we, we've got so much good information, but one last question is, um, um, <laughs> this, so, this was so good. I really appreciate you, Chip. Uh, but uh, how can contractors uh, get involved now? What, what steps should they take right now uh, to, to get involved? If, if this is something that resonates with them, you know, what should they do? Right, well, if, you know, obviously they have to see if this is a fit for their company. Right, because obviously it's not a fit for every roofer. So I would recommend you can go to our website, fedprofits.com. I'll just make a shameless plug here. Yeah. Go to fedprofits.com and click on explore. And, and we've got a two hour a seminar that you can take. And we talk about the good, the bad, the ugly about no bid federal contracting. It's not all roses. You've got to see this, but here's my promise. After you watch the two hour seminar, which will cost you a whole 47 bucks, okay? Once you see that seminar, at the end, you will wonder if you can grow your business with no bid contracts or not. Like you'll either say, guys, this is not for me, get away from me, this is not good. <laughs> or you'll say, hey, what's the next steps? And there's Obviously, everyone's a little different. So we have lots of different next steps if it makes sense for you. So I would say the next step, explore, see if this is a fit for your company. That's awesome. Chip Ellis, thank you so much for being on the show. What great advice. And, and uh, now they know how to find you too. So um, fedprofits.com. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Look forward to yeah, See you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, wasn't that an incredible interview? Are you ready to get involved with government, federal government contracting? 
Uh, well, you know how to do this. So if, um, if this is something that interests you, be sure to contact Chip Ellis. Uh, you can also shoot me an email for more information about that. And let's get you educated and let's get rid of those fears. Remember, we'll get to hold that intention that basically uh, I'm good at the hard stuff. And the reason why we become good at that is because uh, we're educating ourselves. That's why you listen to this program. You really want to educate yourself so that way you know what you're talking about, you know what you're doing, and it means that you're not afraid and fear just goes away. But now it's time for Did, Did You, you know? know? Did you know that you can schedule a complimentary uh, call with me? So this is a strategy call. We, we talk about your business. I want to hear about your business. I want to hear about um, what your challenges are. And then I share some of that knowledge with you. And on this, this strategy call, we're, we're helping you to, to know what kind of things that you can benefit from when it comes to the Roofing Business Builder program. So be sure to schedule that. Uh, my calendar is, you can do this on Calendly. That's calendly.com forward slash Daniel Laxton's. Uh, or you can go to um, the link on my website. So go ahead and check that out. So that's it for the, today's show. We appreciate you so much listening to the show. I'm so glad that you're educating yourself and that you're learning and growing. You're inspiring others. And so keep going. Keep doing this. Let's grow our businesses and, and let's build a better future together. And remember this, that I don't always consult on commercial roofing, but when I do, I make millionaires. Stay wealthy, my friends.